I'm here with uh, Cody. Cody Priano is the uh, owner of Suspension Syndicate. It is a Utah-based suspension tuner. I'll let them tell you a little bit more about what they do here, but uh, it's very experienced. Cody, what, what do you guys do here at Suspension Syndicate? Uh, thanks, Fogger. Yeah, um, here we service suspension. Um, we do basic maintenance, um, diagnostic work, custom tuning for pretty much any brand out there. We do a lot of stuff locally and then also do mail order in work. Okay, hey, uh, background on the fork is uh, three guys got together, Dave Weagle, uh, Jason Shears, and Half Saliga. Those guys are all industry veterans. Weagle, you probably know from uh, Pivot and the DW Link suspension systems. Uh, Jason Shears from Envy Composites. And then uh, Hap from Competitive Cyclist. And they decided to develop um, a fork based on some of Weagle's ideas that he'd been working with for quite a while. This fork is the message. Um, it's uh, uh, a new, f the f their first fork. Uh, this one features 140 millimeters of travel. It's four pounds, seven ounces, uh, and retails for $2,700. So we are kind of expecting a Better lot from this fork. Um, and of course, it's a very unique design. Um, we've seen linkage forks before in mountain biking. Uh, most of the linkage systems have been up at the top of the fork, and um, uh, this one has a very interesting axle path and other technologies that really probably could not have existed prior to, um, you know, the, the past 20 years or something in terms of advanced manufacturing, carbon fiber, uh, cold forge aluminum, that kind of thing. So. Um, I want to describe a few different parts of the, the fork. Uh, this unit right here, which is an integrated leg and crown and steer tube system. And of course this is tapered, and it's all carbon, and it's called the chassis. We have a lower link here. The lower link is um, the shock link. It drives dual shock absorbers. Uh, on the rider side, or right side, uh, there's a Additionally, a damper system, and it's a through shaft shock. Yep. Uh, which means that the shaft that pushes the oil actually goes through the uh, end of the shock, and that's a, a system that's generally considered to have a little bit less stiction, um, a little bit uh, better uh, heat and oil management because there's an IFP in the center that just kind of sits there, and uh, really the only way that the the oil expands is through heat, it's not through pressure as much, and so kind of a cool system. Um, and then this link right here, we call this the, the axle link, and it's the, the one that the axle and the brake mount are connected to. Um, and then the control link, and the control link here of course has an indicator on it for sag, pretty neat, that's built in. Um, and the control link, uh, I mean, if you see, as you, you move the fork into what's more of a, a normal 62, 63, 65 degree head tube angle, whatever, uh, you can see that the control link here is fairly vertical, and through the course of the axle path, it, it moves back, and it's very similar, it, it pulls the axle back. It's moderated a little bit by the, the geometry of the lower links. Um, we had the, uh, the ability to take a look at it and take it apart. There's some other, other parts here. Uh, Cody, why don't you talk about some of the different uh, ports and, and mounting pieces here? Yeah, so this thing is super cool. Um, super rigid. It's able to have a really small shaft, very small, a little bit of surface tension for um, bushings and seals and stanchion friction. Um, 22 clicks of rebound. High and low speed compression adjustments here. It's a three mil Allen. Um, lockout. And that's a three position up there? Yeah, so, you know, probably your typical climb trellis in. Uh huh. Pretty cool. And then you got an upper shock mount there, and then next to it's another little port. Yeah, so this is a normal shock mount and just grabs the top of the damper assembly, like most uh, rear shocks. This one down here has a bearing in it, which you see sometimes on. You know, rear suspension in the well. eyelet itself. In the eyelet itself, yeah. yeah, with the reducer in it. And we pulled the damper out and yeah. and shock system on this side, and 
you know, as you can see from the video that we, we've got going here, we've got a really interesting gear arrangement that um, the compression lockout drives. Yeah, that is really cool. The uh, compression or lockout knob um, grabs this shaft that just lines up with it and keys in really nicely, R rolls down the leg here, um, keys into a little pinion gear is it or a little cog yeah, yeah a little yeah. cog spins another little cog mm -hmm. looks like something from an rc car uh -huh. um and then that so that's all external and then that spins something that you know is closing off a port in the compression one of the cool things about the shock system is that it is shielded it's mm -hmm. all inside of the leg and as you can see inside the leg the leg is uh it's a uh, uh, bladder molded uh, according to jason uh, we've got other links here that are compression molded and then these uh, links, the axle links, actually have a, a hollow form inside, and it's a, I think it's a, um, what do they call that? Um, it's got a sacrificial core, is it? that's what it is, sacrificial core. Uh, another cool thing is the axle system with... Uh, replaceable dropout. Replaceable dropout system, you can go 15 or 20. Um, it's got some cool molded in uh, carbon fiber cable routing pieces mm -hmm. right here. And they, they take a little insert that uh, locks the, the housing in place, and of course you can over tie them as well. Um, let's talk a little bit about some of the aspects of the fork and what's going on there. Um, for instance, um, a big one being the, the, the axle path. Mm -hmm. um, as we move the, the fork through the axle path, as you can see, it's moving rearward and upward yeah and yeah what what do you what do you think is that that's not typical for, for no fork. so what so when you're when you're comp your <clears throat> when your front fork compresses instead of your head tube angle getting steeper and steeper making it more likely that you can get bucked over it stays the same the whole time being the idea and then also for when you're squeezing the brakes so you don't have any dive yeah, and so I was able to ride the fork, and I noticed uh, the compression cycle, you know, resulting in a constant head tube angle didn't pitch you forward quite as much. Mm -hmm. That was kind of a revelation. And um, what you're talking about in terms of the brake link, you know, I'm or the, the axle and, and brake link, is uh, I noticed when I grabbed the, the front brake that it didn't dive as much. Yeah. And I would suggest that that's the result of of the control link here having somewhat of a horizontal component mm -hmm. and it's going to resist the the force of the brake that's going in that direction yeah, as this is spinning up this way it's not right. going to want to move here right and you know it could be enhanced even if they change this made it more horizontal yeah. or change the position of this link mm -hmm. and we happen to know that truss is working on some new forks um, three of them, really, and uh, they're going to have some different uh, travel modes, travel lengths, and it's pretty exciting. They want to, they really want to push this technology. Nice, feel nice with all different iterations of it. Yeah, and so the, one of the neat things I think is the anti-dive effect that, that does come about from this geometry right yeah, here. Yeah, I think that is really cool. And, you know, you're going to be able to stay higher in a mm -hmm. corner. Mm -hmm. For instance, you're grabbing a little bit of front brake, you're in a corner, you're going to stay higher, and you hit a bump. Yeah. And you're not going to have already smashed through your, your suspension travel. Yeah, no, that's, that's cool. It's a good way to have mid-body going into corners just naturally without you don't have to worry about that brake at all. So we, we're looking at the, the linkage here, and these pivots are aluminum pivots. They have pins on all of the suspension uh, linkage points that are safety pins, they're a safety cotter, and they will hold the, the axle in place uh, in instance of a, the bolts loosening. Mm -hmm. Probably get some wobble and stuff. Um, and uh, when we took this apart, everything seemed really tight. Yeah, everything looks really good. The tolerances are all nice, the hardware is nice. It's all Loctited. All Loctited, yeah. Shielded bearings. Yeah, nice rubber sh shields on everything. Uh, so one of the other parts of this is that they're, they're saying that the stiction in the fork is reduced. 
Yeah, I can see it um, for sure. And something else I really like about it too is the very low maintenance. Why do you say that? Well, you don't have to ever drop your lowers. You're not changing the oil. You're, there's no splash bath oil. You don't have to worry about your bushings getting dry or damaged. There's, you know, um, what well, you change the oil and the, the damper now and then, and make sure your bearings are always spinning. Keep your hardware tight. And of course, bearings, you know, have a much better load capacity than a bushing, especially mm -hmm. when they're arranged perpendicular to their load, as it is here, as opposed to bushing, which is kind of you know, linear to that load, it's mm -hmm. going to take a lot of side loading. Yep. So I would expect that these bearings would last quite a long time. Um, Trust thinks that they'll last forever, so it's bearings for life. Really? Oh yeah, nice. they're giving you bearings for life. Hey, we're super excited to see this fork out on the trail. Uh, we'll probably get a chance to test it in a little bit, get on a bike. Um, I want to encourage you to uh, check out singletrackworld.com and Singletrack Mag's uh, YouTube channel. I want to thank uh, Cody Priano and Suspension Syndicate for hosting us tonight. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you on the interwebs.